Okay, what we need to do now is ensure that the DPPs, the data page registers, are set to the correct value. And they should be set to 204.205.E03. Now we can do this from the edit menu, segments, set default segment register value. And we can put them here. apply it to all segments and we can do it properly. What we then need to do is go through every single bit of code here. When we get to a, a data byte, press P and IDA will automatically create the function. Press another P after that and it creates a function. Another P creates a function. Now this will take you at absolutely hours and this is what I used to do hours and hours it takes you so what I did I wrote a plugin and the plugin does a number of things first of all it will reassign individual segments for the binary and it also sets the DPP registers correctly. I also have a lookup table of the signatures of standard functions that I have found out what they do what they've done and the binary the plugin sorry will search through the binary and correctly comment these functions. Unfortunately this plugin I've got here it crashes so I'm not going to do that one now importantly my plugin will dissemble the binary into code and what it does basically is find DB00 patterns which is the ret instruction for C166 and every time it finds one of those it basically creates a function directly after it now, after it's done that, our binary is full of code. Now, I also want to find out in the binary where trouble codes, diagnostic trouble codes are set. And I know that because through my experience, there's, there's a certain way Bosch assigns DTCs. And this plugin also goes through the whole code to find where these DTC flags are set. Also, I, also, I know that where we have an assignment such as this, I can actually change them into real code data offsets and my plugin does that as well. And as you can see below here, this is what the plugin has done. It's quite comprehensive. And this saves me about a week's work. And it goes through all through the code. Very, very good. I'll just run the plugging again. But we'd find standard functions. And as you can see here, at the bottom it's actually going through the whole binary database and looking for standard functions and as you see it, it does crash this version if we look here you can see it's found quite a few already and if we look at the names window we can see it's found quite a few codes and there's a set DTC function set trouble code if we do a cross reference on that by pressing the X key you can see all the sub functions in the code that set an error code quite a lot of them and there it is here and this is this is out on the ME 
7.2, 7.5. What you find is that they Bosch, they have a, a set of masks here which sets specific bits in the error table and then at the very end there's a, a number here which is the index into the DTC code table and then it calls the routine to set the trouble code and put the check engine light on. Just a few things before I finish. Um, at the end of the binary, generally on all binaries, th there'll be the ROM checksum. And that's done here. It's a 32-bit word, so this, these are two 16s. And then you'll see another, if I press the D key twice, I can make these into 16-bit words. And as you see, these are the complement of each other. So B plus 4 is F. 8 plus 7 is F, C plus 3 is F, so it's the complement of it. If I make that ROM low, check some, label this ROM high, check some. As you can see here, there's a cross-references of functions that actually look at these values. If you go to the first one, and there you go. This is using a RAM variable at 3800000, memory range. And obviously it's loading it into a register, subtracting the store checksum, and then it knows then whether there's an error or not. And basically that's how the checksum routines work. There's a lot of checksums in these binaries. Well, that's it for now. I hope it's been good for you. Uh, and keep your eyes peeled for some more updates in future. Bye-bye.